Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to How to Collect Over 11,000 CDs. So as the title states, of course, I have over 11,000 CDs in my collection and it's not based on any blind buys or any randomly collected music. There's nothing in my collection that I don't absolutely want. Now, I recently got asked a question about what CD was in my collection that I absolutely detested and the answer was nothing because there's nothing in here that I don't absolutely want, which sort of sparked this idea about doing this type of video here to explain how I got to where I am, uh, that it was all through searching out uh, you know, specific pieces of music uh, to collect, making the collection itself a fully curated collection uh, of a music library itself. And I'm gonna go through how I did that and ways that hopefully you can build your own collection too. But before we dive into it, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by subscribing, You'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with how to collect over 11,000 CDs. So after I buy all of one particular artist that I like, you know, you dive into an artist, an artist that's been around a long time, like uh, Kiss, Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, whatever, ACDC, you know, there's lots of these artists that have been around for many, many years, have a lot of albums and so forth, and you finally collect all of their albums you know it's sort of like where to go after that and I, at that point after i've done all the studio albums i generally move into live albums which i'm not the biggest fan of and the last thing being compilations or collections because i'm definitely an albums person first but you know once you've done that for me at least, I will venture into solo and side projects at that point. And it sometimes takes me on some real tangents and things. And so I've got collections of particular artists and including all of their side projects and solo works. And they've grown to be pretty big in and of themselves. And I have filmed some individual videos on these. So like my Scorpions collection is 95 CDs. My Mr. Big collection is 80 CDs. LA Guns is a 50 CD collection. In particular, I pulled that one out because I'm going to reference some stuff from it. This box here holds 30, so it doesn't have the other uh, 20 CDs that are part of that collection, but I do have boxes like those. I also have some that you can see right outside the door there. Each of those hold 90 CDs in them, and uh, those will be the types of places that I collect these together so that I can keep them all related and so forth. But an artist I wanted to talk about that, um, you know, where you can go off on tangents like that. So in, as an example, Winger. And you've got the guitar player Red Beach, who's done solo work like this great album here that just came out a year or two back. But he's also been part of Dokken, making Erase the Slate. He's currently part of White Snake, having done this fantastic album, Flesh and Blood. He's got other side project work. This one here, The Mob, which also has uh, Frontman from King's X and uh, Kip Winger also, you know, of the band Winger took part in that production. Songwriting, you got Kelly Kege on drums from Night Ranger. So it's a cool little super group. Most currently, Red Beach is part of Black Swan. They just put out a brand new album. This one here being their debut, Shake the World, which is absolute fantastic. And then you've got uh, frontman Kip Winger, who has done his own solo work. This conversation seems like a dream, along with some other ones that he's done. And he also uh, put together his very first band, Blackwood Creek. So as you can see, you can really veer off into things. And of course, you got Rod Morgenstein having come from the Dixie Dregs and so forth. So there's a lot of places you can go with some of your favorite bands if you look at the history and where they came from and get a little bit more and kind of understand where it is that your band uh, drew its roots from and so forth. And so I also venture into imports that were only released in other countries. A lot of mid-90s albums from groups that were uh, metal bands, glam bands, stuff like that, only put out albums in Japan. And so in particular, I'm gonna pull out the reason I had that LA Guns box here with me is they put out a number of things that were uh, Japanese release only. Uh, this Live Vampires album here. Uh, they did put out a compilation, Hollywood A Go-Go. 
and um, this one here, Hollywood Rehearsals, which was a covers album. All three of those being Japanese only releases. So, you know, if you're looking for something a little more from your favorite bands, oftentimes there are special releases in Japan and other countries that didn't make their way out here in the US. And so um, some of the other ones, uh, Dokken put out a self-titled release in Japan that has a different uh, mix and track listing than ultimately what came out here in the States. Uh, we've got things like uh, reissues that Yes did, uh, these HQ CD ones where these were remixed by Steve Wilson, never got a release here in the US, only came out in Japan. And so I picked them up for that. Uh, Kiss has recently put out some reissues like this uh, Best Of album that collected together tracks from the solo releases by the Kiss members and stuff like that. So these are things you can not buy readily available here in the U.S. And so you are able to get them in other ways. Uh, Mr. Big put out a whole box set called The Vault um, through uh, Japan itself. So that's, you know, not just regular CDs, but sometimes box sets and other type things as well. A lot of cool stuff that way. Always do check out Japan. They are a plethora of uh, releases and things uh, that are rare and so forth. And recently I ventured into high-end bootlegs, which has not been something that I used to do a lot of. Uh, Pink Floyd in particular, this one Forever and Ever, very cool release here that uh, collects together or takes their two albums, The Division Bell and Endless River, and uh, mixes them together because it was originally intended that those were to be one album, even though they were released 20 years apart from each other. That's how that was envisioned, and somebody did that here. So for me, at least, that was an interesting pickup. For that one there, and, and some of these other ones, if you're interested, they come from a place called rzrecord.jp. It's a Japanese website, very high-end, good uh, bootlegs and worth checking out. Some other ones I pick up from eBay. Uh, this one here, Reverberation, uh, was a Metal 2016 remix that was intended for the box set uh, that did not make it on it. Some of these made it in and then was eliminated, but it was that they didn't quite have rights to these things like this one, the Live at Pompeii uh, remix itself. So I was able to get bootlegs of these things because they had been available digitally or in some format and then ultimately a limited. And then we've got uh, this Pink Floyd release called United which is from the Live Aid concert when um, Pink Floyd along with Roger Waters actually reunited, performed live, but no release has come out from that. So a lot of good ones. Those three uh, cardboard case ones were all just ones randomly off of eBay. Bruce Springsteen and Outtakes Disc, a double album worth of outtakes from the Born in the USA sessions. That's another eBay one. Here's a Don Dockin solo album, Breaking the Chains. It was a solo album before becoming a Dockin album proper. This one here is one of those RZ Record releases that I just talked about. And then here, ACDC, a Greatest Hits double album. This one is also an eBay release. And uh, that one there has all of the tracks mastered to the same level, so makes it worthwhile hearing it and having it where it's not, uh, you know, the volume is all up and down. So a lot of these are done really, really well, even though technically they are bootlegs. And so um, then we've got things that are uh, special releases, like website-only things. Metallica has been releasing uh, live concerts and things like that. Uh, Jerry Cantrell put out his latest solo album, only available through his website. Maybe it's gotten a wider release now, but at the time for the first couple months, only available that way. Kix has been remixing their albums like Blow My Fuse, 30th Anniversary Edition, and Midnight Dynamite Relit. These have only been available on their website. Eventually, six months or so later, they will sometimes show up on Amazon, but usually go out of print super quick. Ugly Kid Joe called Official Bootleg, which is actually just a greatest hits disc itself. So there's cool things like that. Always check out your favorite band websites. You never know what you're gonna find. Then we've got Record Store Day, which is a great thing. Certainly you can get plenty of vinyl from them, but they do have CDs occasionally. Little Feet put out this live album. It's recorded live in the studio, so a little bit better than a straight up just live show recorded in, I think was done for a radio show actually. And then Metallica Live at Grimey's. Um, this one here, you know, was a Record Store Day 
uh, release, but it was also available as a uh, sold on their website. So you could get it that way too, because I actually picked that one up through their website, even though it was a record store day release. Then there's pop-up stores that happen by our favorite bands. David Bowie just had one called Bowie 72. And these two were record store day releases, but I missed them and was able to find them at the pop-up store. So another great way to find things. There's always going to be um, exclusives and things like that. So Amazon has just announced one for the Black Crows called 1972, a covers EP that will be an exclusive to them. It will be digital and physical release, but you got to go to Amazon for it. There's special edition ones like from Target and Walmart. And here's an example of self-titled Bon Jovi EP, which has seven unreleased tracks on it. It's got four studio and three live tracks that are all unreleased. Very cool. Then we've got ones that are concert only releases. So when you go see your favorite band live in concert, always check the merch table and see what's available. Tesla had released this here, which was the Reel to Reel Volume 2 uh, disc itself. This one here is actually from a UK magazine because I did not get it at the show. That's why it says free CD on it. Uh, Whitford St. Holmes did a reunion album and then only sold it live at their shows. This one here being autographed, so that was very cool. And uh, magazine releases. You know, a lot of people don't think of that anymore because everything is online and so forth. But Classic Rock Magazine has put out some really great stuff as bonus to their magazine. So I ran, or not randomly, but always check those. Put out uh, Thunder has had a live album, live at the Brooklyn Bowl in London. Um, Bachman and Turner did Forged and Rock. It had four tracks from their new album and four re-recorded classic songs. Black Country Communion had the story so far, which was just a best of collection from their three releases at the time. And then Rick Wakeman did a re-recording of Journey to the Center of the Earth. And um, that one got a whole special release and that is the only way to get it through the Classic Rock magazine. So this is how I'm building the collection bigger and beyond just the stuff that you can buy online at places like Amazon or through your local record store or so forth. Then there's promotional albums and things. So I will get things from, uh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne, Pearl Jam, The Cure, where they are samplers to albums. One in particular, you can see there behind me, Roger Water, uh, The Wall itself. That was a promo thing released to the radio station, but it was uh, something not sold in stores. So I ordered that from somebody that had it off of eBay to get a hold of it. But you can't buy it in stores. You can't buy it re regularly available type thing. There are still other great things out there with unreleased material and cool stuff on it that make it worthwhile to picking up. I always like the samplers from the four to five CD box sets that distill it down to one disc, and there's a lot of great ones out there. And then in particular, um, other ones, you know, when you have those box sets, sometimes there's only one disc that you want in it. I already owned all the Blue Oyster Cult albums, but they had put out a box set with this disc called Rarities, and I wanted this, so I hunted on eBay until I found somebody selling that disc by itself, and I was able to get it for, you know, 20 to or uh, 15 to 20 dollars kind of a thing and not have to shell out the 100 plus dollars for the box set just to get that one disc. And so I also recommend things like, you know, collecting by one genre. In particular, my favorite genre is glam metal. And while I still only buy albums that I like, I have found that I really like that genre. Pretty much anything that came out during the late 80s and early 90s, I really like. So I'm working to get my hands on as much of it as I can get. And, you know, doing it by that era, uh, just makes it something that is a fun and collectible thing to go after and hunt down and always search for that next artist that I didn't know about kind of a thing. So as opposed to just buying bands that you know. I also sometimes collect by record labels. I've found that certain labels have the same sensibility and taste that I do within music and no matter what they put out seems to fit with what it is that I enjoy and like. And therefore following a particular label sometimes allows me to explore bands and artists that I wouldn't normally do. So I've got Wounded Bird and um, Rock Candy and stuff like that and Frontiers or pretty much anything those labels put out I like and I found some other ones. So even 
if I don't buy everything from them. If I see that the band or, or artist is on that label, but I don't know them, I often will explore a little bit more and that helps me know if I wanna pick something like that up. And so the other thing being visiting the right record store. Now maybe you're not lucky enough to have a bunch of different ones around you. Here in New York, we've got quite a few and each one you know, focuses on different types of things, different genres, different artists. And so I will choose to go to a particular record label base or a record store based on what kind of mood I am for a particular kind of music because if I'm more in the mood for a particular style of music when shopping for it I find more stuff that I like as opposed to going to a place and saying eh not really into it maybe I'll wait until next time and then of course it's sold and it's gone so those kind of things there help and hopefully running through all of that and showing you some examples and stuff that I have can help you know where to explore more help build your collection and see what the possibilities are that you don't have to do blind buys and random buys and only be collecting based on what is given to you and having a bunch of stuff in a collection that you don't like doesn't really make it a full-size collection that you want to draw from and I prefer to have a collection here that is a fully curated music library. So there you go. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. That is my uh, collection of 11,000 CDs and of course how you can do something along those lines as well. And uh, certainly I'm going to leave a link to some related videos. Uh, I've got ones on my music collection where I take you around and show you uh, how I store it and stuff like that. Maybe you're interested in that. And also I've got one on how many CDs I can listen to in a day because certainly after talking about 11,000 CDs you might wonder how I could possibly listen to this many and so forth. So I go into a bit of that. But if you've enjoyed this video consider sharing it out on social media. Help spread the word. I would greatly appreciate it. All right everyone. Take Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.